We are back with the LPL next series. Clement. JDG versus RW already underway. And there's a lot of faces that I'm waiting to see in this one. Imp moving over to the JD Gaming Squad. And of course, Levi from North America coming in. He didn't get to play a single game in the NALCS during 2018, but we all remember him for his 30 kill performances during MSI. Let's see how he's doing. There we are, Levi, level five on that Rek'Sai. Currently zero and one, so not a great start, Clement. <laughs> Definitely not what you expect out of uh, out of the second Vietnamese jungler that we have in the LPL so far. Levi himself, a great fan of SOFM, does say himself that SOFM is the one that started it all. And even in the VCS, when they hold the uh, the uh, All Star event, the teams are called Team SOFM and Team Levi. <laughs> Well, they're going to be seeing if Team Levi gets a successful gank, and he burns the flash, so that's pretty successful in my eyes. Definitely getting that off of Zalrin immediately. This is going to be a second series that we do broadcast of Rogue Warriors. They're a relatively new team. Uh, the only non-rookie on the team is actually Kalua, who is actually a rookie himself in 2018. So, not a lot known about these players, but what we do like about them is their names. I'm telling you, this would be Utong Clan's favorite team because they're all named after generals or Jingyong characters. So a lot of uh, a lot of people that have read Warring Kingdoms are going to be familiar with this team. You have Zarin, who killed uh, 50 of uh, Cao Cao's generals in 1v1 combat, and then you have Kong Ming, the most famous uh, tactician of the Warring Kingdom spirit as well, and of course Zhang Wuji who's just a really great AD carry, and even back then, historically speaking, I don't know if that actually, second part is true, but He was Zhang... a fictional character, so... Okay, so he may off. have been. He may have been. We don't know, Clement. But... The name does mean fearless, and he was a vain streamer, like Raz has said before on the broadcast, and uh, he's probably the only one to pick up Rain Vayne so far. Which is kind of odd that you'd give him his favorite pick. This is like, as Raz was saying, if you got, hi, I'm Gosu into the LCS and just gave him Vayne. Sort of seems like a show match thing more than an actual match, but the question remains, They, I assume this means JDG think they can punish it, and I'm going to trust them. They have a lot of experienced players on this roster. You know, once more, like WE, like a law on Sino Dragons, uh, Rogue Warriors is one of those hyper-carry AD teams. On the scouting report that was leaked from LGD, their win condition was stated very simply as meet, uh, sorry, mindlessly feed the AD carry. That was their win condition that was written for Rogue Wars right there. And that's the reason why I feel like they're confident in going with Vayne for Wuji. Because if you're going to mindlessly feed any AD carry, Vayne is a pretty solid bet. Strong hyper carry, strong in the late game, was recently buffed so that her tumble is off more often during her ultimate, so she will have a lot stronger windows of power, especially as we get into that late game. But my question, Clement, maybe this is going to be Rogue Warriors falling into the same trap we saw WE fall into with them playing towards the later stages of the game. Ooh, but look at this. This is a 4v2 scenario, and, uh, you know, even if they, they're going for a late game composition, they can still get some early game plays going on, and that's what we're seeing here from Rogue Warriors. Oh. Levi might be spotting this out. Yagao walking towards it as well. Shuzu gonna be the one to pick it up, however. Yep. Shuzu, the name of a uh, Shaolin monk. Another great Kung Fu master right there, showing himself off. And just to talk about the compositions a little, uh, we do see probably the strongest topside duo in the current meta between the Urgot and the Xin Zhao. You just get killed so easily in this scenario. And honestly, uh, Urgot has had in the LPL at least, quite a good time into the Scion matchup. It's one of his better matchups, but uh, case is kind of reversed for against Akali. That's kind of the triangle that we're seeing right now. And Zinzel, the go-to jungler for the meta, without any doubt. Just with the Hail of Blades buffs, this is way too powerful. Now we're going to a replay for some reason. It's the first two kills of the game. So we're gonna see Levi getting the gank turned around. Rogue Warriors with a good response here. Can pick up the first kill there. Possibly a return here from Miguel. Oh no! Oh no, mana either. That flashes in. Beautiful pickup. That certainly was a play, Clement. 
Yeah, that was a bit unfortunate coming out from JD Gaming. I don't think like Levi got his full burst of damage off. Probably not the E true damage. So couldn't finish off Koming in the end. The aftershock also was probably keeping him alive in that scenario. Now we have high hopes here for JDG because they do have Zumini Gao who were voted officially the top two uh, rookies in their lanes respectively. And overall, I believe in the LPL, Zumini Gao wrote a top in their roles. So they're very strong players, but they did have to replace their bot laner in Loken and their jungler in Clid, who of course went off to SKT. So there's going to be a little bit of growing pains, but honestly, Rogue Warriors having the lead in this early game might be a concerning sign for them. Yeah, and where they're getting this lead is from an unexpected point. Uh, Shu Tzu doing his uh, Shu Tzu doing his debut in the LPL so far, and also Kong Ming. Uh, previously, they did play with Hua Tian. Not a great experience, I should say. So <laughs> they do have a, ten, a larger roster, but oh, here we go. Hero's entrance coming in. It's a huge team fight now. The flash is out. Killua chasing down onto Levi. Levi getting safe by the Devourer there. Lumao still chasing down. Levi solo oh. finally gets taken out. And they will respond with a turn onto Shuju, but the fight is still going. Killua falls. The double kill for Yagao. Can he keep it going? A third kill down to Imp. Kongmin, the last one standing for Rogue Warriors, but here comes Zhang Wuji. He's he coming in, he shot? wants the kill on no. the Yao. He won't be able to get it. Kongmin still alive, gets the taunt. Will they be able to get out of this? Imp just needs one more shot on the Kongmin to get the kill. No, the flash out from Zhang Wuji will secure his and his mid laners' lives. Crazy fight there in favor of JDG. And what's so surprising about that fight is that we're seeing both members of the bot lane still use the Abyssal Voyage and group for an early 5v3 scenario. We just never see that in lanes anymore. There's such a narrow window of opportunity where you can leave your lane and say, hey, the enemy's not going to take our turret plating. So you really don't expect that type of play. It's so rare in this current meta. And I'm just amazed that JD Gaming are still able to pull this off. You see the start of the fight. It is a 3v4, but you have to see that JD Gaming's top laner is probably going to come in just a little bit faster. The focus was a bit wonk from Rogue Warriors. I felt like they had a chance to actually take down the fight, but Imp with the mobility takes a bunch of damage, stays alive, and they're able to clean up. And you can watch him this entire fight, and he is playing so carefully with his positioning. He's standing far back so he doesn't get engaged on, and just making sure he puts out the poke, because they have the members. All he needs to do is not die and do damage. Great tag team from the JD Gaming. Dumpling duo of Zoom and Yagao as well. Zoom knocking up Zhang Wuji at the last moment just to let Yagao run away with his life. And JD Gaming, like, one of the big questions we had for them was, could they still play this heavy rotational style in a meta where most of the lanes are very isolated, they don't like to go roaming, and I guess the answer is yes, we're still going to stick to our guns and leave our lanes whenever we get the chance. That was the most competent cross-map play we've seen tonight, Clement, by far. In a long time, actually. I yeah. would definitely say there, there hasn't, been a lot of, uh, ha hasn't been a lot of these rotations going on on the map. Now, Rift Herald being dropped there down into the mid lane, taking out at least one of the turret planings, there goes the second one, and there goes the Rift Herald. Yep, and if you look at the uh, towers across the board right here, uh, JD Gaming basically just even up their turret plating count at uh, 2 and 2 apiece, aside from Rogue Warriors. I really like this build from Imp, by the way. He knows that he doesn't want to get caught in a situation where he has to deal with Uji 1v1, so he's getting the extra slow, a bit more protection and letting his frontline do more of the carrying in that sense. Also keep him safe against the carry, well, not the carries, but the damage necessarily of Zhao Yun and Xu Zhu. Both of them doing a lot of attack damage if he's able to kite them out, both with the Iceborne Gauntlet, keep the tankiness up. It's going to be a really good game here for him. Interesting build path from Zoom as well. Now we did see the Shy go for the, uh, the uh, what is it called? Frozen Gauntlet in towards the top lane against the Urgot matchup, but he's just straight starting with a Frozen Heart. I do believe the Frozen Heart actually works on Purge, but I, I don't think it actually stops that much damage. And uh, it, it's kind of interesting because you are missing the core item, uh, the core engage tool coming out from the Righteous Glory, which is typically seen in the matchup. So I really want to see how he, uh, what he does with that. Is he just locked into a pure tank position and he's going to give the engage to the globals of, uh, 
of Rise and Tom Kench. Maybe that's the thought pattern here, but interesting to note nonetheless, not a common item choice we see in this matchup. It's a really old school one, because we used to see this the first time Scion Ra came to prominence as a top laner after the rework. We'd see most people going Frozen Fist first. Uh, sorry, Iceborne Gauntlet, I have to call Iceborne it now because of yeah. Horn. Um, and then now we're going to see Frozen Heart, which was the more defensive option. It gives you a lot of CDR, gives you a lot of mana so you can keep poking. So maybe that's the logic behind it, but it's definitely going to help him tank up a lot faster, like you were saying, and he will be able to play that pure tank role. I just wish Horn has never played. <laughs> just puts too many names in the game. <laughs> I just miss my Frozen Fist name, man. We see another roam coming in from JD Gaming, this time from the mid lane and the jungler going down. Lots of damage going up onto Kalua. Unfortunately, they weren't able to attack Uji. Never mind, they did. <laughs> Half health on both of them. This could be another 5v5 or at least 4v5. Zhao Yun is in the top lane, doesn't have teleport. Zoom still has his ultimate, so Rogue War is looking to back off immediately. Definitely the smarter play there with all the engage potential here on JDG. I guess Zoom is just a very confident driver. He's like, you know, I don't need Righteous Glory. <laughs> I'm good enough with the ult. See, I'm fine. I've practiced for years. I've played Tokyo Drift before. This can't be any different. <laughs> now, after the drag or tower take, rather, in the bottom lane, JDG is just going to reset, try and come back into their lanes, make sure they don't themselves lose a tower in return. And now, Imp going to get some poke down into the mid lane as well. And I really like Imp with the JD Gaming roster. Previously, their AD carry was Loken. He was more of a KDA player, I would say. Had the highest KDA of the LPL. Finished at around like 6.8, I think, in spring. But the problem with him is I felt like he could have pushed far more damage and be more riskier, especially with the front line that JD Gaming had. Yagao, he is a bit of a front line mage player, a battle mage player, if you will. And what his best trait is that he draws so much attention. Because if you don't keep eyes on him, he's suddenly in your back line wrecking havoc. So I did feel like they needed an AD carry that could play a bit more riskier. And if you think about Imp, that's what he was famous for in Season 4. He was famous for the Vayne tumbling forward or the Ezreal uh, just shifting into the enemy team and getting damage and getting kills off that way. Never afraid to really put himself in harm's way. And I think he would be a perfect fit for JD Gaming in such a front, uh, front line focused team composition. And now he gets to sort of dance between the two roles. Here on the Ezreal, he does get to go forward, but he also gets to provide CC from the back line. So he sort of provides what Loken provides, and a little bit more if he needs to use it. And that's part of the advantage of getting such an experienced, storied player like Imp. Season 4, as you mentioned, he won the World Championship along with Samsung White. So this is, while his replacement is maybe contentious for some because they're saying, well, Imp hasn't had a lot of success in years. Imp is still one of the best AD carries here in the LPL. Well, it's kind of a sad story with Imp, but for the past three splits, his uh, promotional vi videos for LGD is, guys, don't worry, but I'm going to take us back to glory. That has been his same line for three years in a row. Unfortunately, he didn't get redemption with his old team. LGD, we used to call the Sleeping Dragons. Someday they might make it, but for, for now, they're just comatose. So I, I hope he does find success on JD Gaming. Like, the world needs a little bit more imp, needs a little bit more rolling around in soccer fields and That's cute right. stuff like that. That emote was the highlight of that year for me. Now, Rogue Warrior is going to push down onto this bottom lane tower as JDG does the same in the top lane. Solo up there is Yigao. They will trade towers. And now it looks like a lot of focus onto the mid lane and the blue buff of RW for JDG. Overall, I actually do prefer the tower trade for JD Gaming. They're running with double global, so it's going to be a lot easier for them to really close out on Rogue Warriors. If they can leverage that map advantage, I, I feel like they could easily catch a couple of Rogue Warriors members out. So personally, I don't mind the trade, even though it does give a bit of free farming over, the, over to the Vayne. Vayne was behind previously in the lane, but uh, she does get a little bit of a reprieve there. My concern following on that is if you just let the Vayne scale up, JDG is in a lot of trouble. Because, oh, for sure. Granted, they have a front line in Zoom, but any tank against a Vayne in the late game, 
is not going to be long for this world. The percent true health damage, Blade of the Ruin King, the huge attack speed, the huge AD steroid even makes it so she can sh shred through almost anyone. There is an interesting interaction to be noted here. Uh, since Levi is on the wreck side, I don't think the tumble invisibility will actually help the vein out that much. You still leave tremors even though you're invisible, so... Uh, they could po potentially use that, leverage that in a team fight. Just keep Levi underground, I guess. Wow. Did you see the damage that ultimate did on Jung Jung? Yeah. You? Ezreal's nuts in these couple of patches. Uh, I, I want to look at the build right here, and it is going for the uh, SMLZ build, where he does get go for the Sork Boots. You have to remember Ezreal, his W... Uh, w, E, and R are all magic damage abilities, and... Really, his ultimate, the True Shot Barrage, comes with a ton of just base damages. So it's really efficient to go for a little bit of magic penetration, especially against a soft target like the Bane. And now, not only does he have that, but he has the fully stacked tier number one. He's going to go for the second one, the Archangel's Staff as well. And he's going to be doing a lot of damage from all that mana. We can see that JD Gaming are trying to force an engage out of Rogue Warriors. Rogue Warriors, uh, they're going to have to look for... Mark, uh, sorry, Kalua to really start the fight for them. They do have the Rakan and Galio combination. But don't have any good wards to really get a flank. Urgot doesn't have his ghosts to start the fight. Zoom up in the top lane, just keeping some pressure, trying to push down into the Urgot. They're just playing it carefully here from both teams. Yep, and this is still a period where I would say the Vayne is not online yet. And JD Gaming are just trying to leverage their AD carry advantage. Get a couple more objectives down. The Vayne, as you say, working towards that Ginsu's Rage Blade. Not quite there yet. Whereas the members of JDG, a little bit closer to their item spikes. Two items there for Yagao. Two and, eh, I'll say a third for there for Imp. So they've got <clears throat> their damage threats mostly online. Like you were talking about earlier, Yagao was the named officially the best rookie mid laner of 2018. Of course, you can contest that because Knight didn't play for half a split, but I feel like he's well deserved in that department. He was very good on Zoe, Azir, and Galio. Those were his three big picks, and he's always known for having a relatively low CSD. He's typically negative in that department, but having a very, very high kill and assist at 15 minutes. So he is a traditional roamer in the sense, and what we're looking for is how do you actually play the game in 9.1 if you're a roamer, if you don't really want to leave your lane? Can he change his playstyle to be more lane focused or dominant in a sense? So far, we've seen the answer is just get a really cool 5v5 in the top lane of your red buff, and then the rest comes with time, and you can just split push. Now, JDG going to pick up that mid lane tower easily off the back of the massive amount of damage that Imp was putting out. Yeah, and all of this is basically just coming off the Ezreal pick. Ezreal, in this patch, even without the Triforce, is still able to do so much damage to towers right now. And I'm not sure Rogue Warriors are really ready to take the fight. We do see Uji with two items now, but they need a good engage angle. They need Rakan in place. Instead, they're just going to look here to the mid lane, try and wave clear it up, put some pressure onto there, and try and force to JDG to respond. But I don't think they're going to have much luck with it. There is good wave clear coming out from Yagao. See? Easy peasy. Yep, nothing much happening still. JD Gaming with a slight gold advantage, 3k over the lead. Just pretty happy taking up any free gold that's on the map. The next Drake probably isn't that oh. important. But Ooh. Baron suddenly coming out from Rogue Warriors. I don't think JDG are even suspecting this the least bit. No, they aren't. They've completely forgotten uh -oh. that there's a Blade of Rue King. They have to go in now. Teleport's coming out. 2k, I think they're too slow. Their only hope is to get the ace here. If they get the engage, there goes the ultimate from Zoom. They've got the engage, but a great quickness from Rakan. Yagao getting Sorry solo, the shield three. is there. Scion is down. Oh my god, Rogue Warriors are wiping the floor with JDG. They're coming in to get another kill. And now Levi falls. The double kill for Vayne. She's still going forward. Lumao and Imp are the only two remaining. She's just going to back off now. Happy with the double kill. Three for 
for zero and the Baron in favor of Rogue Warriors. Oh boy, and I feel like Zoom's engage could not possibly be worse in that scenario. He didn't get, uh, I don't believe he got Uji. He was taken low instantly, and then Darin used his corpse to fear three JD Gaming members and just wipe the entire team fight. And Yagao got split off into the top side of the fight, instantly blown up despite using his Archangels, despite having the shield from his passive. And, and then this, the fight was over. Yeah, this is just Rogue Warriors just out knackering JD Gaming. You know, typically when we see JD Gaming fail, it's never because they can't muscle someone. It's usually because they forget to reset and they take like three team fights in a row. Uh, personally, JD Gaming are my favorite team to watch in the entirety of the LPL. They're always a fighting team. They never back down. But there's times like these where you go like, maybe they could have played a bit smarter. Just, just a teensy bit, perhaps, Clement. And now, with the reset, with the Baron on Rogue Warriors, they need to keep making these plays, keep up the momentum, and keep relying now on Zhang Wuji, who has two items and would have three, but the Hex Drinker there to provide some much needed safety against Yigao. And that was a 5k gold swing in just under two minutes right there. Tragedy striking for JD Gaming. I think the big thing here is that Rogue Warriors, they really are never going to split up. They're always going to stay grouped, and I don't think JD Gaming can find any leverage with their global composition anymore. Like, there, there's just no reason for, for them to ever split at this point. Like, JD Gaming can't deal with the wave clear right now. You can just take free objective gold. So, I feel like this is going to be a period where we don't see a lot of plays being moved by JD Gaming. They're just going to have to minimize their losses. Just going to go for pure defense. Rogue Warriors getting vision where they can, choking out the jungle. Getting as much elite as possible during this window with their Baron. I feel like you just forget about Vayne. You just haven't seen her for a while. Uzi's the only one that plays it. And then all of a sudden, she's like, oh yeah, Vayne does take objectives really, really fast. Well, especially in competitive play too, because as you said, Uzi really the only one to play her, but she usually can get abused in the landing phase. You can usually shut her down and do something in the time before she scales up, but this time, Rogue Warriors played around John Wuji very well. They waited until he had the two items, took the engage they really, really needed at that Baron, and that just broke the game wide open for them. Yep. And now it's up to JD Gaming to really try and come back. They do have a couple late game options as well. As we're seeing, the Ezreal is going for the AP build alongside with his uh, Iceborne Gauntlet. And Rise, late game, if he can pick a target off, it spreads the uh, spell flux to everyone. He does massive damage as well. A bit more conditional, but he can do it. So I don't think JD Gaming are necessarily out of options or out of potential comebacks, but this is shaping up to be a very close 5v5 type of team fight that one, game, uh, one team is going to walk away with. And I think the only hope for JDG is picking off Zhang Wuji. That power, powerhouse vein, 2-0-1. Two items, QSS, and a little bit of magic defense besides. Going to be very safe there in the back lines. If they're able to get the pick onto that, I think their chances are really good of winning the fight, Clement. Yeah, Uji has a lot of good... Uh, I have to say, he does have a lot of magic resistance, though. And JD Gaming are mainly an AP-focused composition. Here we see the engage. Oh, the engage comes in and knock up onto two. Killua with the great engage there. Lumao getting low. Oh, the fear beyond death, and here comes the fears indeed. Now they're going to pick off Levi. Yagao in the back line getting forced off. Zoom as well getting run away from his own base. They pick off all but two members. The Dumpling Brothers left alone to defend their broken home. <laughs> and at the end of the day, the Dumpling Brothers are the only ones alive, and Uji gets to flash his vain emote. This that is not was, looking good for Yeah, JDG. this look really bad. Actually, Zalrin with the perfect Fear Beyond Death, tacks it onto Imp early during the Rakan engage, and they just wiped the floor with the JD Gaming. No contest. And now, Rogue Warrior is going to take the series so far. First game, 1-0 over JDG. You know, I, I'm kind of glad that we just jumped into this game, because I felt like the last 10 minutes of the game probably had nothing to do with the early 10 minutes. Like, it was two completely different games. It was Rogue Warriors... Falling behind early, but then having just the smarter map play and JD Gaming not responding to it, losing to two consecutive team fights where Imp is almost does nothing in the fight, and it's just over. Yeah, really all Rogue Warriors did in the early game, get those two kills early in the 2v2 mid, and then the entire mid game 
or early mid game, it felt like, was just JDG saying, okay, guys, we got this. We can bring it back. We can really win. Oh. And you can, you can even see that. That literal thing happening. You can see early game going oh, over to Rogue boy. Warriors. Mid game, JDG were bringing it back. And then suddenly that huge flip around the Baron. So if I'm reading this correctly, it was a... Oh, I, I was reading the damage graph. So wait a minute, was that a 14k swing? Excuse me, it's on the left side of the screen over there. So it was a 5k swing just there. And one of the rare comebacks we've seen, it's kind of a bizarre game. Honestly, I just felt like JD Gaming forgot about the Vayne and how fast the Galio even does damage to objectives and just kind of let the game slip completely. Yeah, they really didn't respect the enemy team's composition and JDG is... They, they were playing the fights well. They had the map control. They had the late game scaling as well. They, just... they didn't have the macro. And yeah. that was the problem. <laughs> they didn't keep tabs on the things that were going to go pop if they didn't keep the lid on. Because, I'm going to say it now. Zhang Wuji is popcorn. And his vein is very tasty Orville Redenbachers. Let me explain. Once you put the heat on... There's a timer left until suddenly you just have an explosion coming out. And Zhang Wuji, he was not put down enough in the early game. He had no deaths the entire game. So there wasn't a ton of pressure put down onto that vein. And once he was able to use that, get to that second item, we saw the huge swing around that Baron fight. And while you could argue that part of that was JDG's macro around that Baron fight not being the greatest because they just let it happen. I forgot about it. Definitely, definitely a problem, but a lot of that was on them not respecting Zhang Wuji. So hopefully they can change that in the next game. We're going to go to a break before we get to game two of JDG versus Rogue Warriors.